make it look really cool make it more bluey hi guys welcome back to my channel today i am doing a long distance video featuring john and we're going to go through all of the tips that we use to revive our relationship between england and australia would you like to come hi that's a bit squeaky but <laughs> This is my fiance, John. As you know, in our other video, we talked about how we met. We met in Australia during his trip to Australia doing media and photography. We met through that way and we had only seen each other really for about two to three months in the same place. Then on, we did most of our relationship through online platforms, really committing to it and, and knowing that we needed to make this work because we were really important to each other. Yeah. Should we get into the first thing? Yes. One thing that helped us long distance wise was just constant communication. The time difference between Brisbane and London was about 10 hours, 10, nine hours. It gave kind of a small amount of time when we could text because obviously I was working and you were at TAFE and studying and stuff. We would write letters. We would set aside weekly FaceTimes that would often last four hours. Did we figure out it was something like 450 hours of FaceTime yeah. we did over two years. So yeah, lots a of lot hours. of that. I've still got all of the letters. Kept them all in a little pile that we've written over the, over the years still read them today if you want memories write letters to each other yeah. it's wonderful or e-cards as well we would do that sometimes mm, or little emails. packages of i'd sometimes order flowers to your place or you'd send kind of tim tams and other goods but yeah just kind of even sometimes if we were so busy it would just be a like a good morning good night kind of text just to check in keeping up that daily communication was really helpful and really good. I think on his part, he was really good with communicating. I really appreciated having consistent communication has really, really helped us. And even now, like we're still, I'm still practicing it. And I'm you're very too. good to, yeah. Very good to point it out and just to chat about everything. While we were in this relationship, we went into it knowing that it was really serious and we wanted to be able to see each other again. Every time we would separate, we would say, okay, we're gonna meet each other within six or seven months and we would plan a date, what time of the year to see each other, whether I was going to him or he was coming to me. He definitely did more trips coming to me because I was studying at the time. Having that date scheduled in really helped with having long long-term vision and just making that sustainable to get through it and not give up. Mm, I like to have kind of tangible things to count down to. Install the countdown app on my iPad and you yeah. can see like how many days, hours, minutes, like seconds. It's a bit, bit over the top probably, but having that kind of goal in mind helps you break it down really. I just couldn't bear it if we didn't know what date we were going to see each other again. Mm. It's such a good point. Yeah, going into this with long distance because you lose so much quality time spending together, it's got to be something that's serious. It's not something you can just casually commit to. There's so many aspects of a relationship that you kind of lose by being mm. in separate parts of the world. Going into it with an idea of marriage or this could go somewhere, going into it. It's not for everyone. I know some people that were long distance for a while and it just didn't work out. You've kind of got to stick it out and know that it's mm. it's worth it in the long run to be together at the end. And knowing it was serious, going from that viewpoint, I think helps you battle it out when it gets tough, which it did. It gives you a bit of endurance. Mm stick it out because it's worth it. As we were getting into a relationship, there was a specific couple whom we love very, very much and they helped us get together. If you're watching this, we're really, really grateful for you. I um, having... it was for a second. <laughs> Just having people surrounding us who are friends and family, the ones that can tell that it's like the right fit for us. At the time, we just had so many friends and family supporting us. And when we were going through quite a hard time, just their encouragement and their prayers and their insight and wisdom was just something that helped, you know, support us through the really rocky times where we just felt sad or grieved. Doing life in community and doing relationship with each other, it's not just all about us, but actually like doing life with other people who are doing this journey together. There's that extra force or that extra empowerment to, to see that through. Just end up having such a healthy relationship because of it. One thing that we did which we'd recommend would be any of like the love language quizzes really. I think it's trying to think the best way to describe love languages. The way that you most receive love basically. So there are like five different categories. There's acts of service which is serving others. So it might be like, I feel loved if someone makes me a cup of tea or if I make a cup of tea for others even if I don't drink tea which you, I don't. You I'm do the washing. Person, or the washing. There's words of affirmation which is compliments, quality time, self-explanatory, gifts, 
one. Physical touch. Physical touch, yes. Mary will put a link in the description probably. Yes. Somewhere here. I would recommend filling it in because it, we both fill it in and we both are very similar. So the way I most receive love is quality time and physical touch. Whereas yours is quality time and words of affirmation, right? Uh, words of affirmation and physical touch. I think quality time became more of a thing because of just the distance. Yeah. We didn't have that most of our relationships. Yeah. Now that we're in the same country, um, just seeing each other more has really helped. Doing that quiz and each of you doing it and knowing the ways that both of you feel loved and valued is really helpful because I'm awful at giving compliments, but I know that Mary's, that's how she feels loved. So it's something to work on, whereas I'm happy just to sit in the same room as someone and not talk, but just to be in their presence, because I'm an introvert. That love language quiz, it's offered for couples as well as if you're in a friendship, in a family, it just really helps you in general how to love people. Because you give love and then you receive love, but we do it all in different ways. So they have mm. really specific things that you can do to figure that out. And they also do that in the workplace sometimes. Yeah. In our relationship, we both have a strong connection to God and we really trust that God was the one who brought us together because it was quite supernatural. We're very grateful for that. Just being able to walk our own journeys with God as well as doing life together with God, putting God at the center and honoring him in all aspects of our relationship. It's bigger than just us, but just trusting on God, knowing that he has a plan for us and when it's been really tough. We've prayed together a lot, spent a lot of time worshipping and even on FaceTime because he's a guitarist, loves singing, amazing singer. We would just pray and worship the Lord together and do, yeah, it was just so powerful. You could just feel the tangible presence of God like with you and, it, and he is love. He's all about love and I think, yeah, when you commit that into his hands, he will just really bless you. Even if it's not easy, God will be faithful in all of those different aspects aspects mind blank yeah, brain was that, yeah brain that was it <laughs> <laughs> but now we do a lot of events together. We go to a connect group, really enriched our lives, being able to do life together with God on our side. It's amazing. <laughs> Common hobbies and interests, that's key. We met over a mutual love of photography. Our first date, kind of first date, was going down to Byron Bay. And it was more of a hangout. But it was technically a date. Date. Took cameras down to Byron Bay and went to the waterfalls and the beach and the lighthouse. Took some photos and just hung out and ate food. We'll often go out with our cameras and just do practice photo shoots, go for walks, go out for dinner because we both love coffee and, and Asian food. food. Lots of food. Asian food and Italian. Specifically Chinese, Japanese. Malaysian. Malaysian. Thai. Indonesian. Thai. I want to try Vietnamese food. If you like Vietnamese food, like this video. <laughs> We both want to start karate. Yes. Because I want to channel my inner Mulan. And who would you be? Johnny Chan. Johnny Chan. Mm -hmm. Who's Johnny Chan? Jackie Chan's white <laughs> friend, Johnny Chan. I'm my own man. You and my dad could be that duo because my dad's a bit like Jackie out. Chan. We also talked about potentially ballroom dancing. We want to learn dancing together but of some sort. Without any kind of the glittery outfits, I don't really do sparkles. I used to do street dance. I could see that. Know how to do the worms. If you're at a party with me, the worm might come out depending on what mood I'm in. Investing in common interests and hobbies, put aside time whenever. I always bring my camera with me to Australia whenever I came to visit. It's a beautiful place to take photos. Investing in shared hobbies together brings you closer together and it's something to always be able to do together and talk about and chat about. Cooking or sport or going to the movies or even just reading together. I mean, movie, do... I mean, yeah, I mean, going to the movies are great, but you don't really talk. Yeah, That's but what... some people really love going to the movies. I, I mean, you could just like spice it up a bit and do other stuff, but yeah. not always go to the movies. Much of interest is just road trips. We just get in the car. Yeah, just music, go places and explore. Sermons, get out at random places, just go for a walk. And we have a car now. Oh, we'll, yes. we'll be seeing all the British road trips. <gasps> Prepare for a guided tour of England. <laughs> Squeaky bed. Sound effects for this lovely <laughs> yeah, cover we've, everything. Yeah, we've covered everything. Oh, okay, good. Oh. Need to finish the video. And you should say it. You should say it for it's me. Chocolate downstairs. Yeah. That's his treat for filming this video with me. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. I feel like we should do a London video together where we do a bunch of really 
good London spot. The locals. Not but the for tourists, locals, cause... not the touristy vibes. No. We'll do it soon. Thank you so much for joining us in this video. If you have thought of any other suggestions too, or if you've been personally in a relationship and you know some really good tips, please share them down below. And if you like this video, give it a like and subscribe. Uh, we will be doing more videos together, maybe some cooking videos, some jazzy things. Uh, thank you so much and we hope you have a wonderful week. Bye. Bye. Bless ya.